thank you for joining us uh, today to our webinar series, um, a guide, um, a beginner, uh, a beginner's uh, guide to single cell sequencing part two, in which we will discuss about the challenges of sample preparation and overcoming those challenges. So today we have Dr. Sheng uh, Lu as um, uh, our speaker. And um, Dr. Uh, Lu has earned his PhD in uh, cell and molecular biology at the, uh, from the university, so Technical University of München in 2000, 2017. And he's been working as a scientist um, in the field of molecular uh, diagnostics. And in 2021, he joined uh, Single Run Biotechnologies um, as an uh, application scientist where he uh, supports customers and also uh, consults their research projects. Um, today, uh, we have a 30 minutes presentation followed by a Q&A section. And uh, in this section, you can ask your questions uh, either by typing or uh, just using a raise hand button uh, to join for a discussion. Um, so thank you, um, uh, Xian, for joining us today. And the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Yasmin, for the introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here to uh, share a uh, little bit experience and also uh, our uh, technology to you. Um, I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay, today uh, my topic is to uh, introduce to you our techniques and the best practice in sample preparation for single cell um, uh, experiments and analysis. And uh, a little bit ca um, catch up uh, from the previous webinar series part one uh, from Katarina. And you all uh, learned uh, what is the single cell sequencing and what is uh, application and advantages uh, for your research studies and uh, for uh, uh, clinical uh, set uh, in the clinical settings and um, uh, 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 patient uh, treatment and our core te technology about a scope chip and the cell barcode. How are we going to uh, part um, partitioning of the cells and analysis and how to prepare the libraries. And in this uh, webinar, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, how are we get, uh, how are we going to get your experiment started. Well, first uh, from the uh, tissue uh, uh, point of view, uh, if you have a research um, uh, subject, uh, for example, as a mouse, if you take a tissue uh, from any uh, of the uh, organs, you uh, as we all know, uh, when you when you uh, take a tissue, uh, at the composition of the cells and they are. Uh, very um, complex, and if you uh, look at the single, uh, if you look at the cell level uh, here, uh, uh, you, you can see a like a variety of the cell uh, groups that they are clustered um, together. Um, for example, uh, in the first panel, you have uh, you have the fat tissue. You can see there are uh, multiple uh, cell groups or uh, cell um, uh, subgroups. Uh, they um, they are similar to each other. And this uh, indicates the biological um, and complexity, uh, complexity of the heterogeneity. And uh, if you um, do not distinguish them, or if you do not preserve the tissue well, or uh, there's something happens during your sample collection, you will uh, cause a lot of uh, trouble for a downstream analysis. So um, how are we going to preserve the tissue for the downstream techniques or analysis? This is uh, posing a very big challenge and question to most of our uh, research uh, researchers. And, um, uh, today, I'm going to uh, tell, um, introduce to you about our technology, how to preserve a fresh tissue for your uh, single cell RNA experiment. And if you look at the cell cell level, uh, even though we take the uh, single tissue, uh, when you isolate the cells from uh, from the tissue, you will also see a lot of uh, different stages of the cell. They are, um, uh, some of them they might undergo uh, mitotic uh, status in different stages. And uh, if you have a normal cell, a normal tissue or diseased tissue, uh, uh, the the life or the death cells will, uh, they differ from one to another. The transcription status will also differ from one another. 
And um, of course, the cells, they are not standing alone uh, in a tissue. Uh, they always, um, or most of the times, they either involve in one or multiple regulatory networks. So we want to preserve that uh, connections. And um, uh, of course, uh, uh, for different cell types, they also uh, undergo the proliferating um, status uh, from uh, progenitor cells to uh, most uh, differentiated cells. So we want to preserve all those status and the physical or biological status. So um, how are we going to obtain the highly viable single cell suspension as a, a certain material for your experiment is very important. And so given these questions asked, uh, we also want to introduce you uh, our single round one-stop solution for single cell analysis. And basically, if you have any uh, project ongoing or if you want to start a new project with us, uh, consult with our single cell specialist. And from there, we can take your sample from the tissue, intact tissue, and we do all the tissue dissociation until library prep and the data analysis. And, uh, and in the end, we'll deliver a report to you. So this is a one-stop solution for your uh, um, preference. And uh, 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 single row has accumulated uh, a lot of experience in uh, processing different tissue uh, samples, tissue types. So we collaborated uh, uh, more than 2,000 research programs, uh, research projects with uh, academic settings and uh, clinicians and doctors from the uh, uh, research uh, institutes. And we, uh, until now, we have sequenced more than seven, uh, uh, 170 million cells, single cells. And uh, the, uh, this has been, uh, covered uh, more than 400 different tissue types and with a high success rate about 94 uh, 94%. And uh, given this, I want to introduce our agenda for this webinar. I want to give you a general sample preparation guideline or little tips using our kits, how to best uh, preserve your tissue to get viable cells and how to dissociate this um, tissue to single cell suspension and um, uh, give you a little spotlight on our protocol from single run and uh, introduce to you our general library prep steps uh, uh, for the single cell RNA-seq. And uh, in the end, we will have an open Q&A section. Um, okay, first of all, I want to introduce to you our general workflow. So if you have your intact uh, tissue or tissue uh, so, uh, already associated, uh, dissociated tissue to single cell suspension, and uh, our uh, JEC uh, uh, cell life uh, kit and the JEC scope kit will allow you to uh, start from tissue uh, to uh, uh, our, to a single cell suspension and then to the uh, RNA uh, capture and uh, RT reactions, single uh, uh, cDNA amplification and sequencing ready library. And in the end for the uh, sequencing and bioinformatic analysis. And today I'm going to focus on the first part uh, where we use the cell life kit to dissociate and preserve the tissue and dissociate the tissue to single cell suspension and uh, our check scope in general to, uh, prep, uh, to prepare your uh, sequencing ready library. And uh, first of all, the cell life kit includes uh, two components. The first is the uh, tissue preservation buffer. It is a salt-based uh, solution with no chemical uh, fixative, so it has no effect on your uh, tissue uh, biological uh, uh, physics. And uh, it will uh, preserve the fresh tissue uh, up to 72 hours with no uh, transcriptomatic uh, changes. And it allows us to uh, store the solid tissue and biopsies in, in the bio at uh, two to eight degrees uh, up until uh, 72 hours. And this has been tested in uh, more than 400 different cell, uh, sample types. And uh, here I demonstrated uh, uh, results of uh, brain tissue stored in the buffer uh, up to 72 hours and it still maintains a high viability with basically no change from the fresh to 72 hour storage. And if you look at the testing plot, 
uh, we can see the cell cluster of the tissues preserved in the buffer for 24 and 72 hours compared to the fresh tissues. The overlay uh, is uh, perfectly. And so that means the transcriptome uh, changes uh, has uh, minimum changes. And here, uh, I would like to give you uh, a little tip on how to best preserve the tissue. Uh, after the sample collection and from your uh, lab or uh, um, surgical table, uh, first of all, of course, keep the tissue cool uh, on eyes or uh, any ice pack you can find and cut the tissue into pieces. Uh, usually we recommend in, uh, cut the tissue into 0.5 centimeter in diameter or in the weight of um, less than 100 uh, milligram and wash with the PPS to remove any enzymes or blood residuals um, to uh, to uh, get the get the background or get the residues out of the tissue to uh, to uh, uh, reduce the effect in the later procedures and drop uh, drop it uh, completely uh, drop it in the preservation buffer and this buffer has to be thawed completely to re reduce any crystals uh, uh, within the buffer and store or transport the tissue uh, up to 72 hours and um, I also would like to mention, if you have uh, tissues like uh, from the vasculature, you uh, probably have a lot of blood uh, that cannot be reduced and which is still fine. And, uh, but we recommend to remove as much as possible. And um, uh, if you have uh, like a, uh, from a tissue from the digestive tract, uh, so we recommend to wash as much as possible to remove all the enzymes. Otherwise you will somehow, uh, uh, affect the, uh, the later on uh, digestion or isolation of the single cells. And uh, that was for the fresh tissue. And we also um, uh, we also accept the frozen tissue to um, be processed uh, for single cell analysis. And this uh, does not require our cell, uh, uh, cell life uh, buffer. Uh, in this case, you uh, have your sample collected and cut into small pieces in a weight uh, less than 100 milligram and wash with the PPS to re remove uh, uh, blood residue or enzymes uh, that is possible um, and dry the tissue on filter paper and before uh, submerging into the liquid nitrogen. And after that, you uh, soak it in the liquid nitrogen uh, more than 30 seconds to completely freeze the tissue and store the tissue in a liquid nitrogen for further uh, transportation or um, process. And of course, we also accept the cryopreserved cells. Um, uh, uh, this is a little bit easier than the fresh tissue and the frozen tissue. You can either use the commercialized freezing solution to freeze your cells or use the standard protocol in the lab, like 10% uh, DMSO in FPS. And we also recommend per milliliter, um, uh, it is better to uh, contain half a million to one million cells uh, for freezing and store them in the liquid nitrogen for further use. And to summarize the tissue types that is suitable for single cell analysis, and first of all, the solid tissue, uh, which uh, usually requires more than 100 milligram um, uh, tissue weight and has to be a fresh tissue and transported uh, at the cool uh, environment. And using our cell life kit, you can store, store the tissue up to 72 hours. And uh, we can also accept the per, um, per, uh, peripheral blood. So this has, this has to be stored in the EPTA. While um, clinical settings, you are using basically the vacuum tainer, uh, including the EPTA to uh, prevent the blood from hemolysis. And uh, the size we uh, usually require from more than five milliliter. And you, uh, this tissue can also be transported at uh, uh, two to eight degrees and uh, less than 72 hours to reduce the uh, um, hemolysis of the blood. And we also, re uh, we can receive the PBMC, the cell suspensions. So, and uh, these cells, they can, uh, they can be frozen and transported on dry ice. 
And uh, we do require the cell number uh, uh, more than half a million. And the cell availability should be more than 90%. And the volume should be more than 500 uh, microliters. And this cells, uh, we recommend to store them in a minus 80, less than one week. Otherwise, the quality will, uh, reliability will also be affected. And uh, uh, it's worth mention that we can also accept the biopsies. Uh, usually, you know, the, the size, they are pretty um, small and the cells probably also minimum. So we uh, require at least three more, uh, three pieces of uh, each puncture and uh, they can be stored in our cell life buffer and can be transported uh, at the cool temperature and up to uh, store up to 72 hours. And uh, uh, from uh, last um, uh, series, uh, from part one of this webinar, you also uh, learned our techniques. So based on our uh, uh, beat uh, designing, we provide this service, like uh, transcription and profiling, immune BDJ profiling, and also genetic variants. Um, in, in this case, um, if you have uh, samples from human mouse who want to do the single cell anesthetic, uh, we can process the, this kind of samples, uh, fresh, fresh tissue, fresh cell, and cryopreserved cell, whole blood, and PBMCs. For single nucleus, we also uh, accept the human and mouse uh, tissues, and uh, they can be frozen. And the VDJ, uh, uh, basically PCR and TCR sick. We, at the moment, we only accept the human tissue and they can be uh, fresh and uh, cryopreserved cells and PBMCs, et cetera. And uh, we have uh, this lung and cancer panel, uh, we, uh, we call it the focus scope, and we also accept the human tissue uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the service. And um, the second part of the cell life kit, I also want to introduce you to the uh, tissue dissociation solution. It's a mixture of four enzymes. It, it is a universal dissociation buffer for many, not all uh, tissue types, but many. Uh, the ones I mentioned, the 400, uh, more than 400 tissue types that we tested before. And uh, uh, here are some general handling uh, recommendations, how important our single cell suspension quality uh, is to uh, start with. First of all, the tissue has to be fully dissociate, dissociated to single cell suspension. And uh, uh, we also want to minimize, minimize the uh, presence of cell clones, their cells, and uh, non-cellular uh, nuclear acid and potential inhibitors of reverse transcription for the downstream analysis. And also we need to make sure uh, our single cell, uh, our uh, cell suspension cell lines and four uh, flow sorted cells that uh, washed uh, before uh, that uh, can be used directly uh, for the single cell uh, analysis. And the, uh, for the single cell suspension inputs, uh, usually uh, should contain more than 85% viable cells and the cell count should uh, be more than 20,000. And the presence of the high fraction of non-viable or dying cells may negatively impact the quality uh, metrics reported by our cellscope cell software. So we have to make sure the, the cells, they are uh, really in a healthy uh, state. And uh, we also need to uh, keep in mind that we have to treat cells gently to minimize the cell lysis and cell loss. And here, I also want to share with you a, a few spotlight on our protocols in tissue dissociation and nuclear isolation. First of all, the protocol one, uh, it is a universal tissue dissociation for many tissue types. So uh, usually uh, we have this intact tissue then using our tissue dissociation buffer. It takes um, 15 minutes to half an hour process to dissociate from the intact tissue to single cell suspension. Here I give you an example of the microscopic uh, picture. Uh, it is a tissue from mouse kidney. You can see uh, the you can see the single cell suspension after uh, 15 minutes uh, dissociation is well uh, separated and uh, singulated. And uh, we do have um, optimized the protocol for specific tissue types. For example, here I show you the skin tissue. We, all have, we also have brain tissue, uh, a specific uh, protocol for uh, brain tissue and uh, liver, pancreas, etc. 
And of course, the, uh, these protocols, they are free uh, for download. And uh, here I want to share with you is the skin tissue because it's, uh, you know, that the skin tissue is a, a little uh, tricky to uh, uh, dissociate. It has different layers and it's hard to uh, dissect. And uh, we optimized our protocol based on the uh, cell life uh, kit. And uh, we uh, developed this two-step dissociation and we can get optimal uh, single cell suspension uh, within one hour. And uh, here is a microscopic uh, picture to show the singulated uh, uh, cell suspension. And besides uh, the uh, intact fresh tissue, we also uh, have uh, optimized the protocol for nuclei isolation from a frozen tissue. And this will also uh, give you opportunity to process the frozen tissue to single uh, nuclear suspension. And also this uh, operation time is also uh, minimum. You can process from uh, 15 minutes to half an hour. And here I show you a uh, um, cell counter image of the uh, mouse frozen lung using PI staining. You can see here uh, the cir circulated dots, they are the single nuclei. Uh, stained uh, by the PI. And um, of course, when you have the uh, single cell suspension, you also need to do a little uh, QC afterwards to get uh, the uh, most optimal for single cell uh, partitioning. And here uh, we often see that uh, some of the tissues, especially for the brain tissues uh, or diseased tissues, they are uh, there are a big uh, proportion of their cells or uh, they will generate a lot of debris uh, after uh, uh, lysosome. And um, uh, regarding this, we, uh, it requires uh, extra cell handling. And first of all, we re recommend if you uh, vi uh, virilize um, a large uh, proportion of the debris in your cell suspension, the cell strainer can be used to uh, remove aggregates or debris. The aggregates will be retained in the cell strainer and uh, give you the more much cleaner uh, background in your uh, cell suspension, single cell suspension. And the aggregates, um, if you do not remove those aggregates or debris, they can lead, uh, lead to uh, inaccurate cell counts and cell inputs. They will largely affect your uh, estimated cell uh, capture uh, in the downstream analysis. Here uh, you can see this is one of the uh, illustrated um, uh, picture of uh, after the cell loading. Uh, in this, uh, oh, my mouse? So uh, where you can see in the in a few of the macro wells, there are a single cell in the uh, in the chip. And if you have aggregates or debris, they will prevent the cells or uh, affect the, the cells to fall into the uh, well. So this will also affect your uh, cell load or cell input. So um, uh, better remove all those uh, debris to get more cleaner background and uh, get, get your optimum cell count and cell input. And I didn't mention before uh, that uh, in some cases, uh, some organs, the uh, uh, biologically, they have a lot of uh, like uh, red blood cells. And um, when you uh, collect your sample, they cannot be removed completely. Uh, of course, it's uh, the best way to remove those and uh, to do the downstream analysis. And because it will reduce the sequence reads uh, going to the RBC, the red blood cells, um, and uh, they will cost you uh, a little bit more. And um, if you cannot uh, completely remove them, then they will affect your um, uh, bioinformatic analysis and uh, uh, occupy the uh, um, capability of your sequencing. And the RBC lysis solution is, is uh, normally recommended to use uh, to deplete all the RBCs. And um, uh, if you cannot remove them, use the fluorescent dye to count only nucleated cells of, uh, for accurate cell bullets. As I also mentioned, if you uh, count the red blood cells into your cell input, you will reduce your sequencing rates. Uh, and the RBCs will uh, take some part of, uh, of that. And um, uh, during the whole process, and it's also very important, how do you store your cell, single cell suspension? And uh, we recommend always keep your cells on ice, keep them cool to minimize uh, the incubation time. 
and um, the cell loading uh, is recommended to immediate uh, to uh, to be performed immediately after uh, sample and preparation. And after you've got your perfect tissue uh, uh, single cell suspension, then later on we can process process to the single cell partitioning and cell lysis and uh, RNA capture. This um, uh, with our uh, technology, uh, so this part will, uh, will all happen in our micro well. So after you load your cell, your beads and lysis buffer, this will happen uh, in 20 minutes in the chip. In the chip. And later on, you will collect the samples uh, with, the, uh, with the RNA on the beads. You can proceed to the RT and the CDN amplification and library construction. And uh, now I would like to introduce to you um, the general workflow of our library prep using Jackscope single cell RNA seq kit. Um, after you get your single cell suspension, uh, you will, uh, as I mentioned, you load your cell, your beads, and the lysis buffer, and this will happen in the well. And uh, after the cDNA amplification, we will do a, a QC for the cDNA traces. So uh, in this uh, figure uh, on the right, you can see uh, the larger peak is uh, what we really want it for the uh, uh, library prep for the for the step. And then on the left, we I circulated it with the uh, um, a blue uh, rectangle, and these are basically the primer dimers or uh, the self uh, amplification. And uh, this part we will remove it for uh, a cleanup. So after the cleanup, uh, usually we use the impure beads to do a size selection to remove of the unwanted small fragments, and we will have a much cleaner background in the cDNA. And uh, after we have the perfect cDNA profile, then we can proceed to the fragmentation and ligation and uh, amplification of the library. Uh, and uh, in the end, we will also do a library QC to have a perfect library trace then for the uh, library pooling and the denature and sequencing. And we do have a few criteria uh, in, uh, in regards to the tissue uh, dissociation and cell suspension. And uh, in our service, uh, each step will be recorded and documented well uh, for your reference. So uh, in, uh, we uh, uh, group them into three parts. First of all, it's the tissue and the cell suspension QC. Uh, if the cell uh, reaches more than 20,000 cells, we say uh, they are qualified. And if we reach 85% of the cell viability, they will also be, uh, we will also confidently proceed to the next step. If the cell uh, cannot, uh, we do not have uh, viable cells more than 70% can consider, maybe we can proceed, but uh, we consider this sample would be risky. So we do have a few uh, criteria to to proceed. And for the CDN and QC, we also have uh, experience to how to uh, uh, get your uh, optimal CDN trace for the library prep and for the library prep, what is the best range of your fragments to get the optimal sequencing results. So that is uh, all for today. Thank you for your listening. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, you can, um, and this is the best time for you to ask. And otherwise you can also contact us uh, via this email and visit us on our website and follow us on social media. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for a nice presentation. Uh, so yeah, uh, now we can start the Q&A section. So feel free to ask any question that you have. Um, we actually have some here. Um, so the first one is how to make sure the tissues are well preserved in the, in the preservation solution. Mm. Yeah, so um, if you uh, have collected your sample, uh, first of all, keep it cool, as I mentioned. And um, uh, the best way is to immediately process for the downstream. Uh, but for many of the researchers or institutes, they do not have the resources. And uh, what we re recommend here is to uh, to cut your, uh, cut your tissue into pieces and store in our 
um, preservation buffer. And if you vis uh, visualize some blood residues or uh, wash uh, multiple times with the PPS and to remove as much as possible. And um, uh, if you uh, have like a burned tissue, we don't recommend them to be uh, sent for a sequencing because after the dissociation, we'll, you will have a lot of dead cells or debris. They will uh, largely affect your viability and the downstream analysis. And uh, for storing uh, uh, for storing the sample in the tissue preservation, we recommend to completely soak the tissue in the preservation buffer uh, because the per bio we have 1.8 milliliter of the tissue preservation. And how it works, uh, basically the tissue will be permeated by the solution. So the solution will go into the tissue and preserve the cell as the uh, best um, uh, preservation uh, time and to maintain the viability of the uh, cells. And uh, if uh, if the cells, uh, if the tissue, they cannot be soaked in, we uh, we uh, we need to cut into pieces to make sure they are uh, permeable by the solution buffer. So that's the best practice. And, yeah, using the cell life kit. Yeah. So next one is, uh, what is the optimal amount of cells uh, for loading the chip? For loading the chip? Yeah. Um, that's also depending on the target cells we want to capture in the end. So uh, in our experience for standard chip we have, uh, 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 the standard chip we, uh, we have is uh, covered by 150,000 uh, uh, micro wells, and uh, when we input the cell number is around 40,000 cells, and uh, this will target uh, the uh, capture cells around 6,000 to 8,000. If you want to have a, a little bit more cell captured, of course, um, it will also in, uh, you will uh, the cell input can be uh, increased, but it will also bring the risk to increase the doubling rate. And speaking of the W rate, I also want to share with you. Um, here is an example of actual cell loading uh, and the barcode load, loads. So our key parameter of the micro well is uh, in the diameter is 40 microns and uh, also the height is also 40 micron and the bead uh, is 30 uh, micro, uh, micrometer in diameter. So that allows you to only um, uh, have one bead in the micro well. And uh, because of, we have um, 150,000 uh, micro well covered on the uh, uh, microchip, and we only load 40,000 cells, that means uh, most of the uh, wells, they are empty. And this will also reduce the probability of uh, W rate. And this uh, here is an example of a demonstrated uh, results. If you uh, if you look at the red uh, line, and this is our uh, uh, micro well and the W rate. Uh, if you load ten thousand, uh, if you uh, capture ten thousand cells, we can still maintain the W rate uh, less than five percent compared to uh, one of the suppliers on the market. If you have only nine thousand cells. And uh, you already uh, increased to seven percent of the uh, of the uh, W rate. And the best part is because our chip is uh, an open system. Uh, every step you can check for your QC. Uh, after cell loading, you can just use regular light microscopy to check if there are any doublet in the well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so what is the recommendation if dissociating a tissue type that hasn't been uh, tested before? Will single run service team um, require submission of more tissues to optimize the dissociation condition before the actual experiment? Uh, yes, we actually encourage people to send us more samples or uh, challenging tissues for us to process. And uh, I think for uh, for we also offer this a pilot study. We can dissociate the cells until uh, the single cell suspension and let the customer decide are we going to process or not. Uh, usually, we uh, process this and give the feedback to the customer and. Um, if, the, if it works well, then we can process more samples for the customer to do the downstream analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can we send a flow sorted cells to you uh, for single cell analysis? 
And uh, at the moment, um, uh, no, it's not. It's quite challenging because the uh, the flow sorted cells they are quite fragile, and uh, transporting at the, the cool temperature overnight or it's not so optimal for the uh, analysis because the viability will be hugely um, affected. So we do not recommend to do that. Uh, uh, however, you can use our kits to do for yourself, then you will, uh, you know, the flow cells can be uh, directly used after, you know, the preparation. Uh, do I always have to do a tissue preservation before, or is it possible to skip a step uh, and directly start with tissue dissociation? Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, they ask if they have to use all the time these uh, uh, tissue preservation before, or is it possible to skip this and drink mm. for this association step? Yeah, because this is quite a challenging part for most of the researchers. If you have your uh, settings for single cell RNA seq uh, after the sample collection, of course, you don't have to store in the preservation buffer to process uh, to the tissue dissociation. You can directly uh, process your tissue. The more fresh, the the better, right? But for most of the researchers, they do not have the resource to process the single cell in house. So that's why we offer this solution. And uh, you can store your tissue up to seventy two hours. During this time, you can collect more samples. You can transport uh, to other labs, uh, your collaborators, or to us for the downstream analysis. So that's uh, the uh, purpose of, um, for this tissue preservation. Effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, any other questions? I think that's all for today. Um, yeah. So, thank you so much for your time and uh, uh, yeah, and have a great day. Thank you for joining us again. Bye. Thank you.